starting the business. For somebody who is on the platform today, maybe you're only just starting, or you've already started, but you needed for us to go through, how do I start? What do I do? How do I put things in place? Number one, find a winning business idea. Don't do a business because you've always had passion for an area. Please never forget, never forget. I get to meet too many people who, when you talk to them, they are too in love with a very tiny microcosm part of the business. Some people just get stuck with an idea and they are not open to something that is broad because sometimes what led them to it, they don't fully understand at the bottom line of business is making impact, touching your customers and making money. Number two, write a business plan. So in starting a business, write a business plan. You have to have a business plan. It becomes your, your road sign, your guide to where you are going. It's no use starting a journey without a plan. That's why when you enter an airplane today, the pilot will announce the flight plan to you. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, whatever airline, Eagle, Eagle's Rest Airline. Uh, we're on a journey to so-and-so city to be six hours and 15 minutes. This, they, they have the business plan plan to the last detail. They say, if there's any unforeseen turbulence, no worries, this and that, we do not see it in our radar. So they have a plan as to where to get to, how they want to get there. In fact, where the plan seems to not work, sometimes they will abort the journey. I was once on the Virgin Atlantic flight to Africa. We left 11 p.m., I think it was. We left London 11 p.m. By 1 a.m., they suddenly came up to announce that, uh, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry to let you know that our GPS system is not working. We could use the old system to arrive at where we're going, but we don't want to do that because of the danger thereof. So we have to go back. And uh, we'll let you, we'll keep you informed as to how it, how it works out. Jeez, man, <laughs> we didn't leave the following day until like 1 p.m. when they managed to get a plane to come and pick us. But you see, that plan safeguarded a lot of challenges. They were able to know that something wasn't working. That is why you should have a business plan. Number three, choose a business structure. Is it limited? Is it a partnership? Is it a, is it a, a, a public liability company? Is it a GTE? A GTE will be a company that uh, has its profit already pledged to maybe a trust. So it is not for the directors to draw the profit. Number four, open a business account. Remember, we taught this very clearly. We made clear that, look, the tax man will frown at you using the business account as if it is your personal account. The business account must stand separate. If you draw from it, it has to be very clear that it was a director's drawing. And the reason why you drew must be clear. It may include the fact that you are taking out some of your initial investment in the company. You can't dip your hand in company account particularly if it is not a partnership. Number five, get financing to fund your idea. We also had taken you through this the last time. We talked about angel investors, uh, venture capitalists, bootstrapping, peer-to-peer uh, -peer investment that is getting people who are your colleagues, contemporary, your friends, crowdfunded. You need to get funding. You need to get financing to fund your idea. Because no matter how good the idea is, if there's no fund, you will be making a mistake. And I want to counsel and advise, depending on the size of the business you want to run, not for, particularly for those of you who are faith people, 
there's nothing wrong with you believing and having faith. But you see, when it comes to business, make sure there is some degree of credibility as to where the fund will come from. You don't want to launch and hire staff or get customers or suppliers having their hopes high and you're unable to deliver. So you need to get financing for your idea. Look for it and remember again, we took the time to show the places to get funds. Go after them, including the banks. Number six, build a website. How can people hear if there's no place to check you out? You see, today, websites, the internet gives the chance of remote, remote uh, auditing. What do I mean by audit? I can come to your website, know about your company, check you out before you even came. Or uh, before I talk to you, I remember one of my lawyers wanted to come to my house just for us to meet and discuss a common matter. Before he came, I had gone to his website, looked at everyone who's there, what they do. Incidentally, he shows up with his daughter. And he said, ah, this is my daughter. Uh, and then I just called her name. She was shocked. I said, yeah, you are one of the legal juniors in your father's firm. Da, 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 da. You studied here. You did this, that. I said, no worries. I went to the website before you people came and I checked. I just wanted to just know a little more about the company. It made her face light up, build a website. And in the website, be honest, be frank, let people know what you do, but make sure you get professionals to build it. There are people who will tell you they can crank a website together for you for two pounds 99 or 300, I mean, 299 pounds. It's not the amount, it's the fact that sometimes some websites don't sell. I mean, maybe you've heard me say it different times. There's a difference between informing and persuading. There's a difference between informing and persuading. Some people inform you about uh, uh, they, they want to sell this Apple phone to you. They can inform you, Apple phone. It, uh, it can cook your food. It can wake you up in the morning. It can do this. Those are informations, but they have not persuaded you as to why you should buy. Your website should be such that when a person gets there, it engages them. It gives them a picture of what to expect, what you can deliver, what you are able to do, where you are now. It should persuade them to want to part with their money, to make them want to use your services. Very, very major. Very, very major. Then number seven, you need to decide your payment platforms and methods. What do we mean by payment platforms? Uh, a lot of fintechs are rising now. And if you are doing business, maybe that could be a way to really increase your business. Find one of the fintechs who can actually be the payment platforms. Of course, some people use credit cards to pay you, but some payment platforms are now rising. <laughs> Even in the third world, amazing. They'll just come to you and say, look, let us be your payment platform. People will pay for services they engage with in you or your products. They'll use us and every 20 pence comes to us for helping to be the payment platform. I've met a couple of young men and women nowadays. That's all they're doing. They're just running fintechs. They're creating payment uh, platforms. Number eight, hire employees that are needed immediately. Please do not overload your company uh, with employees you don't need. Somebody who used to be managing director of a major bank then goes out to start, just as I mentioned, uh, they started a, a finance house. 
But this person have always worked in large systems. And I told the person, hey, do not start with a lot of staffing. Rather hire on contract, keep it slim, but they didn't listen. I had so many big names. So oh, I need a chief operations officer. I need a finance this, this. I need, I said, you haven't even made one penny. You have not had monies committed to you because their job was to be uh, more like uh, debt collection and debt buying. That's the whole thing in itself. You buy debt. But at the end of six months, <laughs> they are paid off capital. When you start a financial institution, you are required to have a paid up capital to give a threshold of peace for those who will put money in your company, who will uh, who will uh, save with your company, so that if you ever wanted, if you ever went down, you had money to pay them. But before between within six months, half of their paid up capital was gone and paying staff, and they hadn't even secured one, one business. Why? They hired employees too early. They hired the ones they didn't need. Keep it simple, K-I-S-S. Keep it simple, sugar. Keep your staffing simple when you are starting a business. Number nine, protect yourself with the right insurance. When you start business, depending on the kind of things you offer, services, whatever it is, protect yourself with the right kind of insurance and never tell yourself that oh, there cannot be losses. There could be. You need to provide yourself with the right insurance. 